We, we really feel sad mm -hmm. to hear of this news because we have met such a, such a great person. On October 31st, 1990, Emiliano Sala, the Argentine professional soccer player, was born in Cululú, a town in Santa Fe province, Argentina. His parents, Horacio Sala and Mercedes Tavarel, raised him in Progreso after moving from Cululú. Despite being born prematurely and having breathing problems, Sala was passionate about soccer from a young age. His father worked as a truck driver, and while growing up, Sala studied footage of his favorite soccer player, Argentine international Gabriel Batistuta, which reinforced his love for the sport. Sala started his football journey at San Martín de Progreso, where he played until the age of 15. He then moved to San Francisco, Cordoba, to join the football school Proyecto Crecer after catching the attention of a scout. The club had connections with Real Club Deportivo Mallorca in Spain and FC Girodon de Bordeaux in France, scouting local talent in the area. Sala's talent continued to shine as he played for Spanish club Deportivo Solidad B and Portuguese FC Crato. After this, he returned to Argentina for personal reasons. In 2010, Sala made the move to Europe at the age of 20 by signing with Proyecto Crecer, the partner club of French club Bordeaux. During his time at Bordeaux's youth academy, Sala developed a close relationship with Marcelo Vada, the coach of the under-16, and his son Valentin, who had also graduated from Proyecto Crecer in Argentina. They became Sala's second family in Bordeaux, offering him shelter and support. Initially, he struggled to get regular playing time in the first team, leading his agent to look for opportunities at Italian clubs. Eventually, he was rented out to third division US Orléans, where he impressed with 18 goals, Following this season, the League Two team Niol decided to hire Sala. Here, he also scored as many as 18 goals. This earned him a place in Bordeaux selection for the 2014-2015 season. There, he scored one goal in 11 games, after which the club decided to rent him out again, this time to Club Con. Here, Sala worked hard, and his performance improved. He scored as many as five goals in the second half of the season. Nantes was totally impressed with him and decided to buy him on July 20th, 2015 from Bordeaux. In 2015, Sala joined League One club FC Nantes on a five-year contract. He made an immediate impact, scoring goals and becoming a key player for the club. Sala's goal-scoring prowess improved season after season, making him the top scorer for Nantes in consecutive seasons. His first season was a bit shaky, scoring six goals to become the League One's top scorer. In the next two seasons, he scored as many as 12 times for the club. With a record number of as many as 42 goals in three and a half years, there was interest from abroad. Sala's time at Nantes came to an end when he transferred to Cardiff City, a Premier League team, on January 19, 2019, after signing a three and a half year contract. This transfer broke the club's previous record fee of 11 million pounds, paid in 2013 for Gary Medell. The reported transfer fee for Sala was 15 million pounds, According to a sales clause in his contract, 50% of the transfer fee was for his old club Bordeaux. Despite being offered a higher salary from a Chinese Super League club, Sala turned it down because he had a strong desire to play in the Premier League. Following the completion of his medical examination in Cardiff, Sala made a trip back to Nantes on Saturday, January 19, 2019, facilitated by football agent Mark McKay. His plan was to come back to Cardiff on Monday, January 21st to participate in his first training session with his new team the following day. While Cardiff manager Neil Warnock offered Sala to attend their match against Newcastle United, Sala chose to return to France to say goodbye to his teammates at Nantes and collect his personal items. After saying goodbye to his teammates and loved ones at Nantes, Sala was looking forward to his Premier League debut. Before being taken to the airport by Nicolas Palois, a close friend and Nantes defender for his return to Wales in the Premier League, Sala posted a social media post showing himself surrounded on the club's training pitch. The caption to the post read, The Last Goodbye. But on January 21, 2019, disaster struck. Sala boarded a private plane, a Piper PA-46 Malibu light aircraft. The plane, with registration number N264DB, was a 35-year-old aircraft registered to Southern Aircraft Consultancy in Bungie, Suffolk. The private flight had been organized by soccer broker Mark McKay, who was involved in Sala's transfer to Cardiff. The flight schedule indicated a scheduled departure time on January 21st at 10 a.m., but due to delays, the flight did not take place until the evening. The plane was originally scheduled to be flown by David Henderson, who organized the flight with Willie McKay. 
In addition, Henderson managed the Piper Malibu plane on behalf of its owner, but before the flight, Henderson asked David Ibbotson, a private pilot, to pilot the plane because he was in Paris with his wife. The plane took off at 2015 from North Atlantique Airport, bound for Cardiff Airport. On the plane, Sala recorded a WhatsApp voice message for non teammates. Hello, my brothers, how are you? Boy, I'm tired, he says in his message. I was here in Nantes taking care of things, 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 things. And it never stops. It never stops. Anyway, guys, I'm up in the plane and it feels like it's falling to pieces. And I'm going to Cardiff, crazy. And we start tomorrow. Training in the afternoon, guys, with my new club. Let's see what happens. <laughs> So how's it all going with you boys? All good? If in an hour and a half you haven't heard from me, I don't know if they are going to send someone to look for me because they won't find me, but you will know. Man, I'm scared, said the ominous message. Shortly after the message was sent, the plane with Emiliano Sala aboard disappeared from radar about seven nautical miles northwest of Alderney. This was near the Casquettes Lighthouse, before losing contact with Jersey Air Traffic Control. The pilot asked to descend from 5,000 to 2,500 feet to ensure suitable visual meteorological conditions. Radio contact was lost when the plane was flying at an altitude of approximately 2,300 feet. While attempting to avoid clouds, the aircraft lost control. The tail fin and parts of both wings broke off, exceeding the designed speed limit. Around 9.13 a.m., the Guernsey Coast Guard received an alert from Jersey Air Traffic Control about the plane that had disappeared from radar. This happened about 13 nautical miles north of Guernsey. The plane had last been spotted around northwest Alderney, near the Caskets Lighthouse located in the Channel Islands. Guernsey police, after believing that the private aircraft had indeed crashed into the waters, conducted an initial search effort spanning three days, covering an extensive area of about 4,400 square kilometers across the English Channel. Their comprehensive search, which involved three planes, five helicopters, and two lifeboats, lasted for approximately eight hours. However, on January 24, 2019, at 1515 GMT, after an exhaustive search, the police made the difficult decision to call off the search for the aircraft and any potential survivors. Guernsey police, convinced that the private plane had crashed in the waters, conducted an initial search that lasted three days. The rescue teams covered a large area of about 4,400 square kilometers across the channel. They examined data from cell phones and satellite images, but could find no trace of the plane, said Guernsey Harbor Master Captain David Barker. This extensive search consisted of a combination of official and private searches. This included air and sea search missions using aircraft, helicopters, and lifeboats. Dozens of volunteers helped in the search, including the civilian helicopter on the tiny island of Brekau. On January 24, 2019, despite extensive search efforts, the wreckage of the aircraft was not located and the search was officially called off. This decision was based on the assessment that the chances of finding them alive were extremely low. Explaining why the search had been terminated, the Guernsey Harbor Master Captain David Barker said the chances of the pair having survived were extremely remote. He acknowledged that Sala's family expressed dissatisfaction with the decision and he emphasized with their sentiments. Three days after the plane disappeared, Romina Sala, Emiliano Sala's sister, stated that she was convinced that both the Argentine attacker and the pilot, Dave Ibbotson, were still alive in the English Channel. She said, please don't give up searching for my brother. In my heart, I know that Emiliano is a fighter and I know he is still alive. Please do not stop. Romina Sala said she planned to head to the Channel Islands to try to restart the search for her brother. The idea is to go to the search place to push forward with the search. The only thing I want to find is my brother, she said. This announcement sparked a worldwide outcry. Footballers, including Lionel Messi, Gonzalo Higuain, Sergio Aguero, and Diego Maradona called for the search to continue. Argentina's president, Mauricio Macri, expressed his intention to ask the British and French governments to resume the search. An online petition collected more than 65,000 signatures, and Sala's family agreed to fund a private search. Using money raised through a GoFundMe campaign initiated by SportsCover, a sports agency representing Sala began the private search on January 26, led by maritime scientist David Mearns. The disaster site was in international waters, so multiple investigative agencies were involved in the search. 
According to Annex 13 of the Civil Aviation Convention, the National Transportation Safety Board was responsible for investigating the accident. This is because the aircraft was registered in the United States. In cooperation with the Air Accidents Investigative Branch, the National Transportation Safety Board had transferred the investigation to the Air Accidents Investigative Branch because the aircraft was based in the United Kingdom. Consequently, on January 23, 2019, the Air Accidents Investigation Branch officially launched an investigation into the accident. During the investigation, assistance and support was provided by several agencies, including the French Bureau de Enquête de Analyses, the British Civil Aviation Authority, the European Aviation Safety Agency, Argentina's Junta de Investigación de Accidentes de Aviación Civil, and the National Transportation Safety Board. On January 28, plans were announced to conduct an underwater search within a week, weather permitting. The plan was to use an unmanned underwater vehicle to survey an area of the seabed north of Herd's Deep. On January 30th, the Air Accidents Investigation Branch confirmed the discovery of two washed-up seat cushions on a French beach, presumably from the missing aircraft. A new underwater search began on February 3rd, using the AAIB's Geo Ocean 3 vessel and a privately funded vessel. These vessels conducted seafloor sonar surveys in a planned search area of about 14 square kilometers, about 44 kilometers north of Guernsey. About six hours after the search began, around 8.11 p.m., the wreckage of the aircraft was located at a depth of 205 feet. February 4th, investigators confirmed the presence of a visible body in the wreckage. The body from the wreckage was transported to the Isle of Portland on February 7th, where it was to be turned over to the Dorset coroner. Through fingerprints, it was later confirmed by Dorset police that the body belonged to Sala. As a result of this accident, Nod decided never to use his former jersey number no. 9 again as a tribute. On February 25th, the AAIB issued a special bulletin with a radar track and underwater photos of the wreckage, along with a detailed investigation into the regulations surrounding the flight. We are looking at all operational aspects of the flight, including licensing, an AAIB spokesman said. The 59-year-old Ibbotson, from Kroll, Lincolnshire, was registered with the Federal Aviation Administration in the United States and had successfully completed a medical examination as recently as November. According to the FAA, he held a British private pilot's license issued in 2014, which authorized him to fly simple single-engine aircraft. Private pilots are not legally allowed to make a profit by carrying passengers, as stipulated by U.S. law. Recent revelations revealed that Ibbotson sent a message on social media to a friend over the weekend, stating that he was feeling a little rusty with the ILS, referring to the instrument landing system, a cockpit tool designed to help pilots safely navigate their aircraft to airports and aerodromes. Autopsy tests on Sala's body showed that he had been exposed to carbon monoxide, with a carboxy hemoglobin level of 58%. This level of exposure could have led to symptoms such as seizures, unconsciousness, or heart attack. In addition, the AAIB noted that it was likely that the pilot had also been exposed to carbon monoxide. The AAIB decided not to remove the wreckage from the seabed because it did not consider it necessary for the investigation. According to pathologist Dr. Basil Perdue, Sala would not have been aware of the plane crashing into the sea. This was because he had been exposed to the toxic gas he also stated that the pilot Ibbotson, who was older and physically less fit than Sala, would have been even more severely affected by the elevated carbon monoxide level in his blood. Dr. Perdue noted that despite both individuals not sitting next to each other, they were in the same cabin space. On March 13, 2020, the AAIB published its final report on the accident. The report concluded that David Ibbotson was not qualified to fly the aircraft because his license had expired and he was not qualified to fly at night. The report also stated that neither the aircraft nor the pilot had the necessary licenses or permissions for commercial flights. Furthermore, the report indicated that Sala would have been unconscious at the time of the crash due to carbon monoxide poisoning. At the same time, Ibbotson remained conscious and in control of the plane until the moment of impact. An audio podcast named The Emiliano Sala Story further revealed that Ibbotson expressed concerns about the plane after the flight from Cardiff to Nantes. In a voicemail to his friend Kevin Jones, Ibbotson referred to the aircraft as dodgy and expressed his intention to wear a life jacket, stating that he normally kept it between his seats but would wear it for the upcoming flight. Ibbotson also informed his friend that he heard a loud noise, which he described as a bang during the outward flight. 
He recounted checking the aircraft's parameters and finding everything to be in order, but the incident had caught his attention. Ibbotson mentioned that the Malibu aircraft sometimes experienced a mist-like condition, causing the airframe to feel very low. Upon landing at the Nantes Atlantique Airport, Mr. Ibbotson discovered that the plane's left brake pedal was also not functioning. On June 19, 2019, Dorset police announced the arrest of an individual on suspicion of manslaughter by an unlawful act in relation to Salah's death. Although the man's identity was not made public, several newspapers identified him as pilot David Henderson. He had organized the flight and initially planned to fly, but on March 11, 2020, it was announced that no further action would be taken against this individual. Nevertheless, in October 2021, Henderson was prosecuted and eventually found guilty of organizing a flight without permission or authorization and endangering the safety of an aircraft. In September 2019, the director of the company responsible for security at the Burnmouth Mortuary was sentenced to 14 months in prison. The director had unlawfully accessed CCTV footage of Salah's autopsy examination and then shared the footage on Twitter. In addition, one of her employees received a five-month prison sentence for the same crime of misusing computer systems. In September 2019, FIFA, the governing body of football, ruled that Cardiff City should pay non the initial £5 million installment of the transfer fee for Emiliano Sala or face a transfer ban spanning three windows. Cardiff appealed the decision to the Court of Arbitration for Sport in Switzerland. The CAS upheld the FIFA ruling in August 2022 confirming that Sala was a Cardiff player at the time of his tragic death. The club had argued that the transfer was incomplete, in part because Sala was not registered as a Premier League player, but Cass agreed with FIFA's assessment. According to the Cass, Sala's registration as a Cardiff player with the Welsh Football Association indicated that the transfer had been completed. The full Cass ruling also revealed that the Premier League had initially rejected Sala's registration because of mistakes Cardiff had made in his employment contract. When Salah flew to Cardiff in the Piper Malibu, his agent, Misai Indiai, was in the process of amending his contract with the club. The amended document was completed just eight minutes before the plane disappeared from radar. In response to the CAS ruling, Cardiff City had challenged the verdict by filing an additional appeal with the Swiss Federal Court. If this appeal failed, the club planned to file a civil suit against those responsible for organizing the flight. That included FC Nantes and its agents. During an appearance on the Transfer podcast series, David Kahn, an investigative journalist, gave his opinion on the matter. He said that regardless of the technical and legal aspects, the protracted and controversial dispute has tarnished the image, reputation, and integrity of soccer. David Kahn emphasized the tragedy of a remarkable young man and the negative impact of this ongoing disagreement. All these clubs cared about was who was going to pay whom. In February 2022, the inquest into Salah's death began in Burnmouth. Initially, Salah's younger brother Dario attended the proceedings in person for the first week. He later participated remotely via video link, always accompanied by an interpreter. Speaking to the BBC podcast series Transfer, Dario looked back on the joyous moments he spent with his brother and discussed the profound impact of his loss. He also expressed how difficult it is to face the future without Emiliano's presence his brother who could help him or whom he could ask for advice. Following the investigation, Daniel Mockover, attorney for the Sala family, read a statement. Mockover emphasized that the investigation shed light on the complex factors that contributed to Emiliano's untimely death and the missed opportunities within the soccer and aviation communities to prevent such a tragic event. The family appreciated the coroner's decision to issue a prevention for future deaths report this report raised concerns about safety issues arising from the case. They further stated that no family should have to endure the grief caused by a similar preventable accident. In an emotional speech at the Burnmouth Town Hall, Sala's mother, Mercedes Karina Tafarel, revealed that her son felt pressure to complete the million dollar transfer to the Premier League shortly before the tragic crash. She described the period between December 2018 and January 2019 as very intense with Cardiff putting great pressure on Sala to expedite the sale. Meanwhile, Nantes was demanding more money. Miss Tafarel indicated that her son felt caught in the middle and experienced doubts during those intense weeks. The impact of Emiliano Sala's untimely death still has far-reaching consequences. Sala's father, Horacio, died of a heart attack at the age of 58, just three months after the accident.
According to friends, he found it difficult to cope with the loss of his son. Thank you for watching this incredible story about the exceptional football player Emiliano Sala. You can support us by subscribing to our channel. And don't forget to ring the bell icon to receive notifications as we discover more compelling stories and inspiring adventures.